add the line. Can I start the live? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Enoch. Thank you. Thank you, Enoch. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. All right, Angelou, I think you can start. Thank you, Abba Father. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for always being with us and guiding us. As we enter into this Lent season and also this session, we are filled with gratitude for all that you have done and continue to do for us. We are the children of the Most High. And as we hear today's teachings, thank you for anointing our minds and hearts that your word strikes out every thought, every distraction of the evil one. Our hearts are filled to your, with your holy name. Your promises are engraved on our hearts. Let these hearts change according to your plan for our lives. The right seed is sown and we are reaping the perfect harvest when it's the right time. Abba Father, thank you for sending special blessings to Sister Maria and her son who turns 30 today. Thank you for blessing them in abundance and all of them who are celebrating their birthdays today as we, as we are born as your children, Lord, renewed in our promises. Praise you, Jesus, as you bless everyone who is here and all those who are not able to participate today. Your word is fulfilling the purpose in our lives and strengthening your closeness to us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, as you anoint and bless all minds that we are open to receive the word and destroying every work of the evil one. As per today's scriptures in Matthew 4.4, 4, we are here as we cannot live just by bread alone, but your word that is our bread for life and that comes from you and that is you. This we ask in the most mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 Praise God. Thank Praise you, God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Uh, are we doing the recap now first? Who's doing the recap? This uh, is not me. Uh, right. Shall I do? Praise God. Yes, Praise start. God. Okay. Uh, um, right. Okay. Is there any? So I'll. Shall I start, sister? Uh, one moment. Yeah, I think you can start. Is there any testimonies? Yeah, any testimonies before that? Anybody? And then we can do the recap. Anybody wants to share any mm -hmm. testimony? We can no? go ahead with the recap, sisters. Praise right. God. Thank yeah, you, Jesus. Okay. Okay. Uh, one of the Christian graces to exercise is joy. When life, in life, when we are faced with challenging situations, when things irritate us, when things are challenging, do we consciously turn that irritation into joy? As Christians, we must not react to the pressures of the enemy. Temptations is pressure applied to our thoughts to make us move away from God's direction. Temptation leads to offense, bitterness, doubt, and all this makes us fall short of the glory of God. We are called to reject the irritation and offense and stay strong in the spirit. Joy is a powerful tool to exercise and laughing it out is an opportunity to turn offense into joy. God is always on our side through every affliction. We can face every trial by tapping into his grace and his promises in faith. God, grace is God's ability imputed upon our ability to be used in all circumstances, even though we do not deserve it. Real growth takes place under difficult circumstances, not when everything is smooth sailing. We might be the best kind of practicing Christian, but that does not guarantee that we won't encounter any trouble or affliction. When we are troubled and afflicted, the real challenge is, are we going to consider what Christ did for us or are we going to focus on the trial and affliction? 
just how gold is gold that is found in the gold mine must be processed in a fiery furnace to improve impurities before it can be converted into jewelry similarly trials and temptations are like the furnace when we tackle them in joy we are purified joy is knowing the end result from the beginning if we deal with the same situation in offense and bitterness we will become miserable and defeated we all have a choice to enter the furnace as a victor or as a victim when paul and silas were beaten for casting out an evil spirit from a slave girl they obeyed the will of god and praised him paul and silas praised and worshiped at midnight when everybody was asleep the most high god showed up opening the prison doors now paul and silas could run yet they did not they were so engrossed in worshiping the lord when we are in the presence of god we will lose track of time if we are praising god watching the clock it is a clear indicator that we have not entered into the presence of god and experienced the glory of god when we enjoy god's presence even sleep is no longer important god honors us by refreshing our sleep we might get just fewer hours of sleep but that sleep will be deeply refreshing like we've never experienced before warfare gives birth to miracles when we walk with the lord we need to remember that before every promotion there will come a test or a trial the devil is observing us studying the word he knows that that word inside of us will produce a big harvest therefore he comes to discourage and destroy us when we understand that trial and affliction is not created by our action but sent to us we should be prepared for the warfare people who grow in affliction follow the instructions and people who get torn up in affliction do not know the instructions encountering trials is a part of the christian life no matter how good a christian you are therefore we need to put on the whole armor of god so that temptations and afflictions don't have a hold on us when afflictions come we should not look at the afflictions but we need to look at the things not seen everything depends on our attitude do we go into battle as victors or victims when we enter the battle as victors with joy in our hearts and the promises of god in our mouths we see the written promises become flesh encountering trials is a part of the christian life therefore we need to put on the whole armor of god so that temptations don't have a hold on us warfare always gives birth to a great promotion god never forgets the good seeds that we have planted when we look at the life of joseph and study his life we see that he was falsely accused and put in prison where he met the palace prisoners when jesus in, when joseph interpreted the dreams of the cup bearer and baker they forgot about him but god did not forget joseph we might forget others might forget but god doesn't forget every good seed that we have planted brings forth a rich harvest during afflictions and trials the world teaches us to stay calm but christianity teaches us to be joyful why this is because joy is a grace given to us joy is knowing the end result from the beginning joy makes our spiritual muscles grow stronger with every affliction that we encounter we know that christ is the head and we have been adopted into the family of god as the body of christ our nutrition comes from him our minds are renewed by our identity in him joy is that christ is with me christian trials are sent in love and not in the fury or wrath of god jesus in all his moments of suffering served in joy we are in christ and are called to do the same even when death is an open door 
we must be joyful because Jesus said in my father's house, there are many mansions and he will come and take me there. Amidst all the trials, when we are filled with joy, faith is a powerful grace of God. Grace has power, but can be activated when mixed with faith. Faith is my response, my belief to what God has given me in his word. When we express our agreement to God's word, that is when we agree with the grace of God and put that into action. Now, as grace and faith meet, the result is a manifestation of the supernatural. Knowledge of the truth is joy, and this knowledge will be tested. The real battle is not what we can get from God, but how much we believe in his word. As we practice this faith, if we do not see it manifested, then patience comes to our rescue. When our faith is tested and we persist, we reach out to others. The more we reach out to help others, now it is no longer about our faith, but it is about our faith for someone else. As we apply grace by exercising our faith, we become a blessing in the kingdom of God. Brother Johnson shared how when he started his ministry, he did not have the required resources. He learned to grow his faith and he allowed faith to find the resources. As he began to exercise God's grace in faith, his natural needs were taken care of. Faith pays his bills. Faith takes care of his marriage, children, health, wealth, and all other needs. When brother took over the retreat house, it was a major project. Constructions were needed and brother's retreats are all, brother organizes retreats that do not charge any money. Brother allowed faith to find the resources and he is growing in faith. Faith gives him the assurance that it will all be done. He is strong in this area and he has been practicing this for over 24 years. The devil will attack us in our areas of weakness. Once the devil attacks, he keeps the door open so he can walk in and out to make our lives miserable. Whatever we ask, we ask for in faith. We need to have great belief in the truths. The truths can be found in the white booklet. Just like a carpenter who uses his tools to cut the wood, we too must listen to the truths and apply these truths as a tool to cut all that hinders our growth in the Lord. Grace is a Christian toolbox of different virtues. When we use these tools actively, it has a great impact on our lives. Joy is knowing the end result from the beginning. Faith is a powerful grace of God. Grace has power, but can only be activated when mixed with faith. When grace and faith meet, the result is a manifestation of the supernatural. As we practice this faith, if we do not see it manifested, then patience comes to our rescue. Trials and afflictions enable patience to work in us. As the Bible clearly says, let patience have perfect work in you, and you shall lack nothing. When faith is strong, we are patient. When our faith is weak, we are impatient. Let us then use our calling and allow patience to work perfectly in us and in the lives of others. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else has anything to say? Any testimonies now to share? Hello, sisters. Nobody has anything. Hello? Maybe it'll come up, sister, as in when we are progressing. Yeah, sounds like it. Nobody wants to say anything. 
this is very Thomas here already. I would like to share something. Yes, please. Go ahead. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Um, it's just that, um, you know, every day we have uh, different, um, you know, each one has their own routine. The, the routine of, you know, the, of um, doing their daily um, chores together with work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It becomes, sometimes it becomes so mundane. But, you know, um, what I wanted to share was in, in everything that we do, we give praise and thanks to God. And at least uh, for me, um, I do that every minute of the day. Um, not uh, constructively, but uh, as and when I keep praising and thanking the God, Lord every minute uh, for whatever I am doing, when I am doing my household chores, or whatever I am doing, whatever task it may be, I keep praising and thanking the Lord. And, and that has given me so much of um, you know, strength, comfort, and ability that I lean only on him for because he's my source and my provider. And all the wisdom, strength, and ability comes from him. And I'm able to get about the day because only leaning on him and, um, you know, getting that uh, strength from him, drawing strength from him. And it is such a, a blessing because uh, sometimes, um, you know, it's, uh, we don't know what challenge we are going to face when we get up in the morning. And um, that's when the Lord, you know, when we seek the Lord, the first thing, seeking God's providence in the morning, asking the Lord to take us through the day, guiding us and asking him to send his angels to be with us. And that's something that I've experienced every day that the angels, uh, you know, hovering over um, around me and over my home all the time and helping me to do what I have to do for that day. From the morning that I get up right up to the time that I lay my head to rest at night. And that is such a blessing, such a blessing. You know, that God's providence is, uh, when we seek God's providence, everything falls into place for that whole day. Nothing goes wrong. Absolutely yeah. nothing goes wrong. True. And I can testify to that. And that's what I wanted to share. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Angelic. That's really beautiful. Deborah, you're very high. low. We can't hear you. Can't hear me? Gosh, what's wrong with my thing today? Now can you hear me? Yes, sister, we could hear you yeah, perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessing. Thank you for the lovely testimony that you shared with us. And yes, we yes, all sir. of us need to praise and thank God every day, every every minute we are, you know, we are alive. We need to praise and thank Jesus for that. Because when you because of him, and you know, we are all we're all working each day is only because of him. Yeah, we're all alive only because of him. Amen. Sister yeah. Deborah. Amen. Yes. Anybody else has anything to share? Come on, sisters. Moira, Sister Sari. I think just yeah. like Sister Angelic was Sister? sharing. Yeah. Just, yeah, just like how she was sharing. I think um, when you begin the day and submit everything to him, yes. because this is something that I have, uh, I think I shared in the past couple of weeks also, this has been... Um, you know, the whole 1 Peter 5, 8, right? Where the devil always waits like a roaring lion to pounce on you, to attack you. And the only scripture that comes to my mind is submit, submit uh, to the Lord, resist the devil and he will flee, flee from you. Because, uh, you know, he is there to attack, but then we have our shield in our Lord and he will always stand ahead of us to protect us. We just have to, you know, really submit to him. So beginning every day with that submission, with that offering, with thanksgiving, because we are so used to, at least I've been so used to only saying, okay, I, you know, I probably need this and uh, I, this is what's important in our lives. But now when the focus has changed to say, he has already given all that in abundance and we always begin that with thanksgiving. So every minute, every second for every you know breath that we take, 
it is only in thanksgiving because our breath every moment that we spend i am walking i am here i'm able to type all because of him because mm-hmm. that's 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 the grace that's um, the way he has created us healthy and strong so no matter what comes against us i i don't think we need to be in any fear or worry because we are so so strong in him who abides in us so i think just like sister angelic i i feel that once we have begun that submission there will be a lot of changes and no matter how difficult your chores are for the day no matter how um, difficult or uh, you know think things comes come against you but because you have offered the day it just moves according to his plan and all you need to do is just continue to be in submission and thanksgiving and gratitude and it will just move in your favor everything will just work out for that day uh, by the end of the day when you're taking account of what happened you will be like amazed saying that i got so much so many things done and accomplished i don't know how it went but i can do all things through christ who strengthens me and that's the truth that we yeah. uh, you know it's becoming so so strong in us now amen yeah, philippians right. 4:13 yes yes yeah jen yeah that's very true jen you know and also following 1 peter 3 9 very importantly mm-hmm. you know sometimes some something comes and in between to you know irritate us or you know uh, it can be just you know the, that garbage man who was supposed to come and he says today it's wet waste and not dry waste and you take the dry bucket out <laughs> and yes. then you get irritated and so, then this if your maid comes late expecting her to come on time and you've already washed your dishes these are very simple simple things but yet we are tested put to the test every minute of the day and that's what we have to pass that test according to 1 peter 3:9 yeah and then you know at the spur of the moment at least for me i said oh lord jesus forgive me please i have to fine tune my speech i think it's in 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 uh, james uh, 1 5 i'm not sure of the scripture where we have to be gracious with our speech and uh, be very attentive to what we speak so immediately at the drop of a hat i say jesus forgive me because i shouldn't be uh, aggressive i shouldn't be uh, getting annoyed but rather reciprocate in love according to 1 peter 3:9 yeah yes Hello? praise god praise god sisters praise god yes yes i just want to give one testimony sisters sure 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 yeah, yeah, yesterday while i was just praying i received a message in my group that a boy of 23 year of autistic child is missing and i don't know this person but i just got the message immediately i bound the spirit which is holding him back for not returning home and i prayed over him that he has the mind of christ and the wisdom of god is flowing into him and uh, i have commanded the angels to go wherever he is and i asked him that he should return home and within 2 hours and i entered i don't know some holy spirit prompted me to enter an adoration so there was there is a 24 hour adoration in divine retreat center i somehow managed to enter there and i started praying over there just thanking and praising jesus that i have said it and it is done and in jesus name he has written and mm-hmm. within 2 hours i received a message that he is found in the hospital so and uh, he is at home with his parents Praise and i was Praise just glorifying god. god that this was the power of god that i commanded the angels to go forth and to bring him back in Jesus' name. And it was done. And I was continuously saying that he has the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God is from, a flowing into him. And wherever he is, he's reaching home to his parents. And within two hours, he was in, his arm, in the arms of his parents. So I want to glorify God for the word of God, what it is indeed a true word of God, which I keep experiencing day in and out. So all glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank sister. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Anybody else has anything else to share? Come on, sisters. I'm sure you'll have some small little testimonies to share. Yeah. 
I'll share something, Sister Deborah, that the Holy Spirit um, has been impressing on me recently. Um, and it was Sister Pamela actually shared it on the Nothing is Impossible to Jesus class a, a few weeks ago. Um, now, a lot of us probably have recorded scriptures on our phones and, and maybe keep them or play them, for example, if you're sick or if you're you're while you're sleeping um because obviously we're we're, we're less we're, our spirits i suppose are are more open to receiving the word when we're there's less resistance i suppose when we're asleep but sister pamela had shared that she will listen to when she's doing her housework she will listen to the scriptures on her her phone on a loop uh recording her own voice um, and I had, for example, any scriptures that I would usually pray in the morning, I, the Holy Spirit prompted me to record them onto the voice, uh, voice memos on my, my phone and then share it with the VLC app. And I know one of my sisters will copy in the link to downloading the VLC app for anybody who hasn't downloaded it. And there's a loop option where you can play the scriptures on a loop. And for example, if you're at traffic lights or if you, for example, if you were in a rush out the door that morning and you didn't get to say, um, your, your your scriptures or even for example the binding and loosing prayer on page 26 to 28 of the white book is very very useful if for example you're being um, or you're, you're finding yourself being distracted or blocked from maybe uh, doing any kind of ministry work that you're involved in or for example if you'd really like to volunteer for a certain role but you're just finding that you're not ready yet um and i, I put that in inverted commas, commas because as in none of us are ready um until as in we don't know how to do something until we actually just jump in and do it mm -hmm. you can't learn you can't learn how to swim by sitting on the edge of the pool um as as brother johnson um has <laughs> shared recently and it's so true and all my sisters who are e-writing and proofreading can probably attest to this that we only learn like we're all learning every day no matter how long you've been doing it there's new things that the holy spirit is teaching us all and it's a very very humbling experience um we don't need to know how to do everything uh, we don't need to know how to do everything before we actually go and do it. The learning is in the doing. And, um, but sorry, just back to the, the this, because it's actually, it is, it has made such a difference. Um, and for example, did they, even if a negative th thought spiral starts, as in you could be just sitting at traffic lights and a thought of somebody might come into your mind, you can literally have a list of people that you need to bless that day on your, recorded on your voice note. And just, you're, you're driving along, thank you, Jesus, for blessing Mary, John, X, Y, Mary and John, I love you and I bless you and I ask God to give every good thing to you. And once you do that, basically, the tormentors have to leave the minute you start blessing people. And that's just one example. Um, even recording the binding and loosing prayer is so useful. For example, if you start thinking, oh, no, but I have to do X, Y and Z household chores. I will leave the e-writing till the end until the chores are done. Um, and obviously, we're told to seek first the kingdom of God oh, and his yeah. right righteousness and all of these things will be added unto me in Matthew 6 33 so when we do his work first he lines it up so that our work kind of gets done or everything just falls into place or um, he shows us how to create time or how to put aside a pocket of time that we we hadn't really thought about using our time constructively or creatively and um, so he shows us how to make a, a better use out of our 24 hours um, and it's so useful for as I said if you're just driving home or no matter what you're doing just literally rather than going looking for where you've got there looking for your white book or looking for the sheet that you've a prayer written on have it on your phone and just hit play it is so so helpful even have your psalm 91 on your on your phone and within your own voice and what mm. i found it the most useful for is where for example you really want and you're 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 in the emotion has taken hold, a negative emotion has taken hold, taken hold of you. And you are, you're saying, for example, you might be saying a scripture on, or on the rosary beads and you're, you're watching for that emotion to leave each time you say the scripture, but the emotion just feels as if it's getting worse. 
by having your voice recorded saying a particular scripture, for example, that, that the Holy Spirit has guided you to in a certain circumstance, um, you're so focused on keeping in, in time with your own voice on the recording that you haven't even noticed in a couple of minutes that the emotion has completely left. Mm -hmm. You're at peace and you know that your spirit is, is basically in line with the Holy Spirit. Once you're at peace, you're believing the scripture and you're at rest and it's just so awesome and it's such a simple thing to do and we can all do it as in anybody that has a smartphone can download the VLC app you just record your voice on the voice notes on your phone and for anything that you need to renew your mind on it's so helpful so no matter how busy we are um, we can still take our medicine three times daily or as many times as we need God's medicine which is the I suppose the only medicine and it's just it has really revolutionized revolution revolutionized um just for example as things get busier now that 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 everybody is obviously moving out more lockdown has ended for us here in Ireland I'm, I'm assuming that it's kind of it, it has ended for most people around the world and uh, as you get busier, you're having to be more creative with, I suppose, both ministry work or how, how you do your ministry work and in terms of incorporation to the, the word into your daily life. So rather than having to run upstairs to the door to grab that scripture to say it, um, either pick one line of a scripture like we've been taught how to do on the Nothing is Impossible to Jesus classes and... Um, or just hit hit play on your mobile, have your ears plugged and just pray the scriptures along with your own voice. And it's just a very simple, practical tool that we can all use because we obviously need to renew our minds daily. It's like brushing our teeth um, and you're not going to go a day without brushing your teeth. So we all need to do this multiple times a day. So praise God and thank you, Jesus, for showing me this very quick and simple technique. And I'm sure plenty of you are doing it already, yes. but we can use it more the way we can incorporate it into more areas of our lives um i know i probably wasn't as as um well, this was because we were so based at home for so much time uh during lockdown that uh yeah so praise god and thank you jesus thank you thank you sister that's beautiful and thank really you for all of us to share Yes. Thank you, sisters. Thank you, thank thank you, you sister. Thank you. And I've put the link uh, of Play Store uh, where you can download the VLC player on your phone. So yeah. awesome. whoever has not been so, able to do it. Yeah. So that's for Android. Um, I might just copy in the iPhone um, okay. link. So do you have a link for a Mac laptop? Um, I'm sure if if anybody just uh, Google's uh, yeah, VLC for yeah. Mac, Mac um, yeah, I was doing that. It's in the Play Store, Debbie. No, I know, no, my, I know. I was trying that it wouldn't come, so I'm just going to try another way around. So the App Store. Now I'll just get the link. Praise brother God. is your brother Thomas. Oh, praise here. God. Yeah, brother Thomas. Good afternoon, brother. I know he's you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord, brother. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear yes, you, brother. Praise God. There's a slight muffling in the background, brother. Okay. Brother's walking. Is it from my mic it is coming? Yes, brother. Yeah. Okay. I'll fix it. No problem, brother. Take your time. Is it better now? Yes. Much yes. better, yes. brother. Thank, Thank, you, you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So, uh, can we get started? Sure, yes, brother. Yes, Absolutely. Brother, Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's make a prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this session, Lord. And thank you that you are our teacher. You are our comforter. Thank you that you are with us and you will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you for the anointing that you have given us. Thank you for the wisdom and the spirit of revelation and wisdom that you have given us, by which you have opened the eyes of our understanding 
so that we may know what is the calling the richness of your uh, of your grace and the power that is in us lord we thank you and we praise you lord we thank you for this session and everyone who is going to hear thank you your word is going to minister to them lord and it's going to change their life we thank you we praise you we make this prayer in jesus name amen 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 amen, amen. amen. praise god praise god uh so uh like few days back you know um, there are so many areas where i've seen changes there are so many areas where i've seen uh, you know work in progress i have seen a lot of amazing work of god in my life but yet there were areas where you know as to as to fail and um, you know so when i was thinking about it like why uh, those things are not yet changed or or uh, how do i overcome that and this is what the lord showed me this is what the lord explained to me which i'm going to share today and that is about uh, you know it's in james chapter 3 verse 3 onwards we will read james chapter 3 verse 3 onwards james chapter 3 verse 3 onwards yeah, should i read brother is enoch there to share the screen I thought Debbie sharing the screen. Uh, one moment, please. <clears throat> I thought Enoch is going to share the screen. All right. I'm shy. One minute. Okay. No problem, <laughs> Enoch. You take your time. Praise okay. God. <laughs> He's so sweet. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Do you want me to read that, brother? It's okay. I can read. Okay. Uh, just in case if it is not completely coming, then you may have to read that. Or I can read it from my Bible. Yes. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouth that they may obey us. We turn about their whole body. So, it is talking about tongues, speaking words. Okay. um i used to struggle in some of the areas of my life i was not able to overcome i was not able to you know some of the issues maybe you know whatever like anger or whatever areas of my life and what the lord you know kind of uh, explained to me or revealed to me is that he said the way horse is turned whether left or right or whether you have to you know make him um, walk or run you know it's all through that bit it's all through that and it's there in his mouth okay so that bit is controlling whether he should go to left whether he should go to right whether he should run fast or whether he should slow down everything is by that bit there is no um, you know what do you say there is a power steering that you have in car or there are some automatic gear and there are manual gears there is no other way to turn him or to you know um, to direct him or to turn the horse there is only one way is by uh, holding that bit and in the same way the lord said that we are the only creature only creation of god who can speak there are so many powerful uh, creature of god you know creation of god there are so many beautiful there are so many giant and huge cre- you know creature and 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 some can swim some can fly some can run fast but none of them can talk the way we talk praise the lord praise because the, the lord. lord has given us the power that is in our tongue and we all know the scriptures we all know proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 we all know that you know the power of life and death is in the in is in your tongue and whoever uh you know likes the fruit will eat thereof so but we need to understand for everything and in everything you can use the word especially the word of god so you can declare for your things so example you know suppose if you are going for a meeting and and you are anxious what will happen or if you are going for an interview so what you should do is you should declare the word of god the lord goes with me if he is for me who can be against me the lord's favor is on my life 
whatever I do, the Lord blesses that. And as you confess that, as you speak that word, and as you approach that meeting or interview or whatever important work, you will see the result. So here that word of God says that uh, death and life are in the power of your tongue. Mm -hmm. So the controlling force for death and life is your tongue. So basically it's like a steering for your life. It's like a steering. Ne? Like many a times Brother Johnson says that, uh, you know, does God hold your future or is your future in God's hand? And that's when he's, he quotes that scripture. So, we need to learn. I have been preaching this for a very long time. But there are areas where I have not applied this wisdom. Or this uh, wisdom, you know, uh, in that area where I have not spoken. Like, for example, you know, I used to get disturbed or uh, sleep. I used to get up in the night. Or sometimes I would be... Um, you know, I don't feel like doing certain things or not feeling like going to gym. And I have seen that, you know, one leads to another. Like, you know, I, I don't feel like doing this and then I have a headache. And then one leads to another thing. Then that leads to another thing. And my whole day would get spoiled because of that. But what I've learned is I can declare through the word of God, using the word of God for all these things. You know, uh, so for example... I know that a lot of my things are depending on my uh, time that I spend with the Lord or my devotion with the Lord. But for some times, you know, there are some things that comes up or some circumstances that comes up and I'm not able to, uh, you know, uh, go for a devotion or spend that time or I'm not able to do that. So what I've learned is before I could do that, you know, I want to spend time studying the word of God. Before I could do that, I would declare in the name of Jesus, Let's say I am supposed to do it in the evening. I say in the name of Jesus, I declare that I am going to have an awesome time with the Lord. That's all. One line, two line prayer is enough. And I'm just declaring in the name of Jesus, I am going to have a wonderful time uh, studying the word of God. Thank you, Jesus, that when evening, when I'm going to meet you or when I'm going to start, study the word of God, I am going to have a wonderful time in the name of Jesus. And that's all. Because, see, there are so many circumstances that are trying to um, stop us, that they are trying to, you know, uh, uh, take us away from the Lord. There are so many things that are ha uh, happening around us. Not everything, it's, you know, it's like uh, circumstances, our friends, our family members. But if you know that this is important, that's why God has given us the power in our tongue. And you can speak those things. And that's how you can turn your life through your words. You can turn your life through your words. And as you speak, you know, uh, this next scripture in, in James chapter 3, if you can read that. Yes. James 3? Yeah, chapter James 3. James 3, 3. Yeah, 4 and 5 we can read. Okay. Can I read? Yes. Okay, read. I'm also having. Behold. Yes. Yeah. Okay, brother. Yeah. Go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Can you see? Can you all see the screen? Yes, we can. Behold also. The ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they unturned about with a very small helm. Mm -hmm. Whithersoever the governor listen, even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Praise the Lord. So a great a sheep, which is so huge in size. And when you see an iceberg or kind of, you know, iceberg uh, as you are, uh, you know, traveling in the ship. So when the captain sees at a distance, you know what he does? He starts turning that, uh, what is it called? Helm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Or a rudder in one of the translations. He, he starts turning that. So in a car, if you turn it like three or four times, okay your car will take left or your car will go to right side. 
but when it comes to sheep it doesn't happen immediately okay you have to turn it like 3 4 5 6 times or at least 10 plus 10 10 times and then when you turn it plus 10 times you will find just one or two degrees that sheep is turning okay then you turn it again like 5 uh, 6 times more or 10 times more uh, i have not uh, you know seen it but what i've seen in mo- mo- movies what i'm sharing so you have to turn it like 3 4 5 10 20 times and then you see a little degree it will take to left and as you keep on turning that uh, help or that uh, rudder then it will keep on turning on that side same way your life will follow your confessions your life will follow the words that you speak okay your life will go in that direction where your words are going first okay so that's what you need to know like you know i don't feel like studying there are people who say i get um, you know sleepy when i read the word but there are people who say i don't remember when i read the word or um, i don't understand when i uh, you know read the word this is what you are confessing and these words are bringing that blockage that bondage that kind of a, you know uh, stoppage or blockage in your life because of the words that you are speaking and this is how you can overcome from it you know if you are in bondage by your words only through your words you can come out of if you are not able to do anything because there is nothing you know um, there was one um, doctor i was looking at her video and the way she explained how uh, our brain functions or the way god has designed it it is such a marvelous and amazing thing you know when we call somebody he is a stupid person he doesn't remember he is a you know he is a stupid person the way god has designed our body our especially our brain it is so amazing it is so amazing praise the lord but what we need to understand is through your words through your confessions you will see that your life is going to turn to that direction where you are talking and that's what i realized i used to say you know i don't feel like doing this or i don't feel like going here or i feel that you know this is what is happening but i have learned that i need to speak the word i need to speak the word of god especially in that area we do our confession in the morning we say our prayers we, we do our confession but when it comes to day to day life are we using the word are you using the word of god to change that situation of your life when you see an iceberg when you see a situation coming when you see a problem coming you know towards you are you using your words to change the direction of your life if you don't then that sheep if, you know the captain if he doesn't turn it then if he do, doesn't turn the the direction of the sheep he'll go in and bang on it he'll get crashed and that's what is happening a life is getting crashed by every iceberg that is coming on our way because we are not using the word or especially the word of god for that situation and that's what we need to do start speaking for everything in your life start speaking the word of god the promises of god especially start confessing you know once um uh i went to goa retreat and i had questions you know why i am not able to uh because i have god has really uh, blessed me in my profession in my office you know in my career but there are some certain things i am not able to do it i am not able to or i was not able to do it at that time and i ask god questions like why i am not able to do this why i am not able to overcome this why i am not you know perfecting in this area and that's when brother johnson was giving an example and he said this word you know he says i don't know why i am talking because he was talking something else then in between he mentioned this and then again he went back to the original topic that he was preaching but what he mentioned he said that in his childhood um he had uh, i think diabetes when he was young and whoever would offer him sweet he would always say you know i don't like sweet the reason was not that he did not like sweet but because he had diabetes and he could not eat that at that time he would always say you know uh, i don't like sweet i don't like sweet i don't like sweet so somebody in goa you know that was like very famous sweet in india somebody offered him uh, during one of the break and when they offered him sweet he says i don't like sweet 
and then he realized it's not that he was you know he never liked or he was not fond of sweet from childhood but because he kept saying that i don't like sweet i don't like sweet i don't like sweet that's how now his system has become like that that whenever whoever offers him sweet he says no i don't like, sweet. like sweet so the reason is because the words that he was speaking the word that he was speaking and that's how you will see your life would be uh, going in the direction of your words your confessions your dominating confessions in your life that's where you know if there are my husband doesn't listen to me my children doesn't listen to me and nothing goes this or you know this is what is happening oh i am not able to do this or i am not able to do that or i am not able to follow this or i am not able to understand this i am not able to go there or i am not these all these things what you are doing is through your words you are kind of you know limiting yourself or limiting what god can do in your life praise the lord and that's praise what god. i learned and that really changed my life i'll tell you in my office i was not able to do anything even the smallest of the things but i took philippians chapter 4 verse 13 i can do all I things through christ who strengthens me from within i can do all things through christ who strengthens me from within you know first time ever in my life um i drew a picture i was doing a drawing of my own face that is first time just that i i felt like to do that and i was just doing first time ever in my life other was my drawing if you see you know i have to name it just below the picture that this is supposed to be you know this is supposed to be this animal otherwise you will think something else if i draw an elephant it looks like a mouse or if i draw a mouse it looks like something else <laughs> but the moment i was saying that and i was drawing it i can do all things through christ who strengthens me and i was drawing my own picture and the way it came out i was shocked and whoever i showed it they said wow and even you know it's so amazing because as i was speaking the word of god and as i was believing the first time what i am doing it was so nice and so uh, you know uh, beautiful because there is power in our words and we need to use that power we have to use that power we'll just read one scripture in psalms 108 psalms 108 verse okay. 1 Psalms one then eight was one. Yeah. Says, "O oh God, my heart, heart is, is fixed. It is fixed. I will sing and give praise." And here is what I really, really, um, I was surprised to see the word here. Now the word, I will. uh even with my glory what he says i will sing, sing. and i will give praise even how with even with, with my glory. glory so where is this part called glory in your body is it my clapping is it my singing is it my dancing is it my shouting is it my believing is it my rejoicing where is this part called glory What where is it in your body in what we say tongue yeah. not tongue yes your tongue is your glory amen your tongue is your glory can you imagine that god calls this part of your body as your glory glory but why or where or how do we use our glory we use it for shame we use it for complain so is your tongue glory or is your tongue complaining is your tongue um, you know uh, talking about the problem or is your tongue talking about the solution is your tongue describing how great our god is or is your tongue describing how great is your problem is your tongue describing the greatness of your problem or is your tongue describing the greatness of our god is your tongue always 
encouraging people, uplifting them and building them? Or is your tongue destroying them, discouraging them, rejecting them, complaining them, uh, naming them or, you know, uh, uh, speaking evil or wrong about them? Where is your glory used on day-to-day -day basis? Your glory is the most, most important part of your body. First is your heart, which is the most important thing. And second is your glory. Your glory is your tongue, the words that you speak. Because I'll tell you, there are 100 complaints or questions that we have for God. But the one answer that God gives us, one is spiritually his word, the word of God. And the second one is the word that we speak, mm -hmm. the word that we declare, the word that we speak about our situation. Praise the Lord. Praise I was God. having a back pain. I was um, not able to fast. You know, my uh, blood pressure would drop and I, was in, I had to eat something or at least have some chocolate or sweet thing, you know. So all these things I was going through and I was not able to fast. I was not able to uh, stand for a very long time. I was having a back pain and all these things. You know, maybe I accepted the fact that I was overweight and that is why I have a back pain. And all this when I was going through, one thing that changed my life is by using the glory, my glory. And my glory, that is my tongue, speaking mm -hmm. the word of God, speaking the word of God. Thank you, Lord, that I am able to hear your voice with clarity. No confusion. Thank you, Jesus. I am able to hear your voice with clarity. There is no confusion. Thank you, Lord, that I can hear your voice very, very clearly. Thank you that your word says that I can hear your voice very clearly. And as per your instruction or your prompting, I make decisions. That's all. I will be able to hear the voice of God. When I declare that my life, my experience will follow the declaration or the word that I speak. Can we go to Roman chapter 10 verse 9 and 10? Roman chapter 10 verse 9 and 10. I know, you know, you have heard about this teaching but I wanted to emphasize this because I know a lot of scriptures about, you know, power of tongue, speaking word, but Somewhere I missed to apply that word of God in my life. And that's when the Lord reminded me. And that's what I wanted to share with all of you. If there are any areas of your life where which is hindering your spiritual growth, your fellowship with God, your relation with God, your understanding the word, your interest, your understanding this the word of God. Right. Yeah. 10, 9 and 10. It says, for with... Uh, Strangely, can you enlarge that, please? Sorry, or whoever's sharing, sorry, I beg your pardon. Is it okay? Is it okay, uh, sister? Just hold your control key and scroll it. Control key and scroll. I think it's an... Is it yeah, an it's, uh, it's, from the, it's from the website only. Yeah, you click the, the read full chapter. Did you want to go into the next verse, brother, was it? Nine and Nine ten, and right? Ten. Yes. I, nobody can see it? Yes, yes, we can. We can see it. It's okay. okay. If you scroll it, you, basically you have to zoom it. So once you zoom it, you know, it will show as big. The left and right side. It will... There's three dots in the top right-hand corner, um, Sister Deborah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to go in there. Three dots. There's nothing that says you. Just the very top right hand corner. Yeah, I can see three, the three dots. Yeah, you just click on that and yeah. it should show you. So if you click on it in the very right hand corner there. Yeah. Three dots, one on top of the other. Yeah. You just move your arrow key over and uh, it will, it should come up um, to zoom to increase the size or increase the font or not. No. And there's also a font size button just below the search bar. Um, just below where the King James Version. Can you see that? Just to the right hand side underneath that, have, that yeah, field. Go and sister. Hey, Suzanne, a co-host. Yeah. Um, praise God. 
So it's um, I will share now. I will stop share. No problem. What? You want me to share? I'll share now, sister. Right now. Just bear with me a moment. I'm um, sorry, so we're looking for Bible gateway. Okay, so it was, was it Romans? Romans 10, verse, 10, 9, verse 9 and 10. Romans 10, oh, 10, 9 to 10. And it's the King James version you wanted, was it, brother? Yes. Yep. Praise God. Sorry, Romans. I forgot the S. Romans. Romans yeah. chapter 10. <clears throat> 9 to 10. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth. Sorry, I'll. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Correct. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Thanks God. So, you know, you know the word um, here is sozo and sotoria in Greek, which means salvation, which means everything. Okay. So, it says that with your heart you believe. And with your mouth, you confess. With your heart, you believe that Lord has already forgiven your sin. And with your mouth, you confess that God has already forgiven you. With your heart, you believe that by the wounds of Jesus, you are healed. And with your mouth, you confess that by the wounds of Jesus. And it says, it shall be and thou shall be saved in verse 9. It says, if you believe in your heart, that God has raised him from dead and confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, then what will happen? The result. Okay. So there is your heart, there is your mouth that confesses and the result is that you shall be saved. For your believing and your seeing, saying, you will see the manifestation of God. It's always believing and seeing or saying and believing will bring result in your life. Because some don't believe but only say. They say, by the wounds of Jesus I am healed. By the wounds of Jesus I am healed. So they say that I am healed. But they don't mm. believe. There are some who believe but don't confess. Don't speak. Don't declare. And that's when you don't see the result. And that's what we need to do. We need to use the word of God and declare the word of God. I don't know if you... Uh, in uh, India, especially in villages, we used to have a person, uh, he was called, I think, Heral. Uh, whatever government would make a decision, especially in my area, it would be uh, Sarpanch and Gram Panchayat or a district level or a village, uh, Taluka or village level. They will make a decision that today there will be no water coming or they will make a decision that, you know, uh, we are going to distribute free books and free uh, notebooks to all the students or they would make a decision. So they would sit like four or five of them. They would sit in the cabin or the office and they would make a decision that today onwards, we are going to distribute uh, the books to the children or we are going to distribute food to certain people or we are going to distribute, uh, you know, the polio doses to people. So they would sit there and make a decision and the decision would be final they would sign and it was kind of a decree or it was kind of a law that was made by the authorities but the law or that decision would not reach to the people the people of the village because the four or five four or five people who are in authority already made the decision but that decision needs to be established it needs to reach to the people of the village so they would one man would come Okay, and then he in Marathi he would say Aika ho Aika. That means hear what I say. Oh yeah, oh yeah. In English, I think in some of the uh, places, and he would declare what was decided. Okay, and as he was going what from that one, that? Hmm? Huh? 
Yeah, yeah. It's called Heral, right? Yeah. So he would go from places to one colony. He would go to the next colony. He would go to the next colony. The decision was already established. The decision was already made. The decision was already taken. The uh, whatever uh, you know, the facility were already granted. The decision was already made. But it would only be effective to the level where he would go. So he goes to the first colony. He declares it to the people. People believes it, and they correspond to what they heard, and they would see the benefit of. Then he would go. He would go to the second colony. He would declare what was decided in that office by the authority, and the people would hear it, and they would believe it, and they would go and uh, you know receive the the benefit of. It. Similarly, God has already made a decision. God has already established everything that we need. Everything, everything that we need in life, God has already given it to us. Everything, but this will come into place or it would i can see the result of it is when one person declares that the word of god or the will of god is forever established in heaven therefore i establish it on earth how do i establish it how do i bring it into effect how do i make it effective how do i bring the result of god's will by speaking by declaring that's how i do it okay so by speaking by reading and by you know reading the word and this word of god i speak into my circumstances i speak into my body i speak into my finances i speak into my circumstances i declare over those situations and that word of god which is settled in heaven gets established gets uh, revealed and manifested in my life in my situation in my body in my finances when i speak it and declare it praise the lord and yes, that god. is why it is very 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 important that you have to learn to speak not only for bigger problems not only for sickness and disease but for everything god has given us the power and that tongue that we have is a powerful tool that god has given us by which we can express our faith we can declare manifest the will of god by speaking the word of god praise the lord praise we know god. that famous uh, you know victory lesson that we all know yes jesus spoke to the victory jesus spoke to the sickness jesus spoke to he said you have to speak to the mountain he said it's just not in in your heart you believe but you speak with your mouth to the mountain you speak to your wallet you speak to your situation and as you speak you know like i said i was not able to uh, let's say do certain things let's say i was you know uh, not regularly i was able to spend time in the morning or whatever time so how i would do it i would say in the name of jesus i declare tomorrow morning i am going to have an excellent time of fellowship with the lord in mm -hmm. the name of jesus tomorrow morning i'm going to have an excellent time of fellowship with the lord so by the time i i join by the confession that i made in the morning i would go and i would say that i am going to have an excellent time with the lord i am going to you know this is the day that the lord has made mm -hmm. i will rejoice and be glad in it this is the day that the lord has made and i am going to walk in his fellowship i am going to walk in his um in fellowship with god in the joy of the lord so whatever you are learning you know we are downloading a lot of things you know it's like your ears are your inflow to your heart mm -hmm. and your mouth is an outflow from your heart your ears are your inflow to your heart and your mouth is an outflow okay. of your heart praise the lord praise so what god. we need to do is speak speak the word of god in that situation speak the word of god and for everything that day to day life day to day life i'll give you one more testimony once um, i had gone for a prayer and my mother used to tell me that time i was around 19 20 years old and my mother had warned me that if i get late late you know uh, from coming from prayer or if i come late after 11 o'clock or 11:30 something then she would shout at me and you know she would uh, really scold me 
so um she called me i was just reaching my home like uh, uh, 10 or 15 minutes away from my house and she called me and she said where are you i said i had gone for prayer i'm just coming home and she shouted at me and she said you just come home and i'll break your leg you just come and see what i will do <laughs> and i knew that she was very very angry at that moment but you know what i did i was just walking uh, like 5 or 7 minutes distance i was just walking and i started declaring i said in the name of jesus i command let there be peace in my house so once i go home she will welcome me with smile huh. and this is not really possible but i mean in natural but i kept on saying that and by the time i i reached home and the moment i you know i rang the bell she opened the door she smiled she said okay you have come and she went inside no shouting no scolding at that point. so he's gone the situation completely changed is because i was speaking the word or declaring that and this you can use for every situation i could not understand the word of god in my office where i had made mistakes i would declare the work of uh, the word of god the things that i did not know how to fix it or how to learn or how to do it in my job i would say in the name of jesus i can do all things through christ, christ. who strengthens me from within and i would speak the word i would declare the word and as i was doing that i could see the result coming in that way i could see that there were changes happening i could see the smallest thing i'm not telling you about a big big thing or a big miracle or a big uh, healing i'm not talking about that even for your day to day things for your day to day work that you are doing day to day things that you are doing you can speak declare confess the word of god you can declare in faith you can speak in the name of jesus i declare this is what is going to happen and as you declare walk in faith you will see result you will see favor you will see circumstances going in favor of you rather than against you and this is how we walk the walk of faith you know once i was meditating on how to walk you know um, there is only few scriptures are repeated in the bible few scriptures so this one scripture one word of god is repeated four times in the bible in four different books mm-hmm. one scripture repeated four times in the bible in four different books one is in habakkuk one is in romans one is in galatians and one is in i think um, corinthians i think so the so four times it says just shall live by faith just shall live by faith just shall live by faith and i was thinking what is the meaning of living by faith why not living from faith why not why not living uh, you know for the sake of faith why not uh, living in faith why not uh, living uh, for the sake of faith why it says living by faith living by faith okay not living through or not living for not living in but it says living by faith and i was asking the lord meditating on that scripture and this is what is the meaning living by faith living by faith and then one more word came to my mind and that is one crippled man walking by crutches not walking in crutches not walking for crutches but walking by crutches okay now as i was meditating on that one line or that one statement it says a um a crippled man okay walking by crutches and when i was meditating meditating on it this is what i thought when a crippled man who cannot walk who cannot stand if he has to go to let's say kitchen if he has to go to let's say a toilet or a bathroom if he has to go from bedroom to hall if he has to go to shopping he has to go to a uh, mall he has to go for a wedding he has to go to church he has to go to prayer whatever he may have to do even he has to take three steps to go anywhere even in that room you know what he will do first he will bring his crutches he will make them stand okay first he will uh, he'll keep his crutches and then lean on those crutches first okay praise god 
Yes. So what he will do is he will lean his body completely on those crutches, and then first the crutches, you know, he'll take the uh, first step by by crutches. So his crutches goes first, and then his legs or his steps. Okay, and as he goes one step at a time, he would be able to go to uh, you know washroom to bedroom to hall to wedding to church to prayer meeting, but without those crutches. he cannot take even one step and the lord explained to me he said son walking by faith is exactly the same if that cripple man without taking the crutches he takes a first step and he says let me walk he will fall fall on his face if he tries to hurry up and and don't take the crutches he will not be able to walk he will not be able to stand because those crutches are no longer there to hold him and our spiritual life should be always always be on faith on faith so what is the meaning meaning is i am going to office i am going by faith i am going by bike let's say i am i am riding my bike and going to office so my faith is like this thank you lord that in my pathway there is life there is no accident there is no delay there is no traffic jam i have faith and i declare this in the name of you. one line just one line prayer and as i go there i see supernatural result so uh, though i went on my bike though i was riding the bike but i walked by faith to my office i walked the bike faith to my office praise the lord i have to go for an interview i have to go for an office meeting i have to go even to cooking you know the things that you do uh every day and you know it and you might have done it thousands of times but i tell you just say lord i am cooking this and thank you that you are helping me to cook today amen i'll tell you your your dish will come so nice so nice that everybody will say what did you put today you can tell them that there is a masala there is one what do you call masala in english spice ha uh, what spice did you put for today's food you can tell them that all these days i was putting all the other spices but there's one more spice that i have learned about and that name of that spice is called faith amen so along with your salt and all the red chilies and whatever other things that you're putting in your food put one more spice one put one more masala and that is faith once you put faith i'll tell you whether you put masala whether you put other spices or not or whether you you know you forget one of the important one but i'll tell you that faith spice is the most important thing that would make that thing and what i'm teaching is day to day things here what you can do i mean for every area of your life every area of your life you can use faith you can walk by faith and you can confess by faith you yes. can confess by faith you can walk by faith and say in the name of jesus Jesus this is the day that the Lord has made what my eyes have not seen what my ears have not heard what has not even entered into my heart God has prepared those things for me praise the lord praise there is a scripture we say that when your ways pleases the lord he even causes your enemy to be peace with you when your ways pleases the lord he even causes your enemy to be peace with you Amen. many are the afflictions of righteous but god delivers them from all many are the trouble of a person who loves god who honors god but god delivers them from all by this you will know that the living god is among you when he start driving out all the uh, problems and all the financial problem and all the sickness and all that things away from your life then you will know that the living god is among you so all these things you can use it on your day to day life praise the lord praise you god. don't have to say those big big uh, yeah this is that scripture proverbs 16 verse 7 when man's ways pleases the lord he even makes his um, enemy boss to be with peace with him his enemy a uh, neighbor or whoever that person who doesn't favor you who doesn't like you who always put you down who always you know uh, speak harshly about you or speak bad about you when your ways pleases the lord he even make that person a uh, enemy or, or even that enemy to be peace with you so all these scriptures that we have to just declare it by faith in the name of jesus 
I declare that I walk in the favor of God and in the favor of man. You know, I used to um, travel by buses, BST buses in Mumbai. And those of you who know, you know how those buses are. One, mm. it is always crowded. Crowded. Second, you know, those conductors who are there in the bus who is giving us tickets, he will, for a change money, he'll fight with you. You know, suppose the ticket price is around 2 rupees or 5 rupees. And if you give him 100 rupees or 200 or 500, he'll really shout at you and he'll start fighting. If all of you don't bring change, where I'm going to give you? And he'll start fighting at you. And that was an everyday problem for all of us. So we had to either keep a change or then, you know, be ready to uh, listen from that conductor. But for me, yes, I was always trying to keep the change while I was traveling. But what I would do, I would say the scripture, Luke chapter 2, verse 52, that I walk in the favor of God and in the favor of man. And as I was saying those scriptures, I would go in faith. And you know what? This has happened uh, with me. Uh, Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor mm -hmm. with God and in favor with man. Praise God. So not only God's favor is there on my life, but also man's favor is there on my life. I just declare that. And as I travel, you know, once um, uh, I, I remember I had a hundred rupees note and the, um, the bus fare was, I think, around four or five rupees. So there is one person who gave him 50 rupees. And his bus fare, I think, was around six or eight rupees. He started shouting at him and they were both fighting. And he's yelling at him and you don't, uh, you know, you always bring like this and where I'm going to get the change and all. And after him, it was my turn now to give him money. <laughs> now that other guy gave him 50 rupees and his ticket price was eight, six or eight rupees. Yet he was fighting with him. Now I had 100 rupees note and my ticket price, I think, four or uh, three or four rupees. Oh. I knew that he is going to double shout at me because, you know, he just now had a fight with that other guy. But I am seeing this scripture that I walk in the favor of God and in the favor of man. The moment I gave him the 100 rupees note, you know what he did? He looked at me, he smiled and he just, you know, he paused for a moment. He says, okay, don't worry. I'll give you some time. Wow. Uh, so this is how I do it. You know, I take the scripture in day-to-day -day life, even the smallest of the things, everything, you know, I depend on God and I use the scripture. I use the word of God. And as I, as I do those things, I see amazing work or the result of God. God's working in that area of my life. And this is what I wanted to encourage all of you. Start speaking into your situation. Start mm -hmm. speaking to your food, to your cooking. Start speaking to your people, to your house, to your family. Start speaking to your things. Praise the Lord. Start speaking to your, um, you know, things in life. And that's what we need to do. There was one man of God. I heard his testimony. He would go and speak to his plants. And just on the other side of the road, you know, uh, people were growing the same kind of crop. But their uh, harvest was so less, if not even a 10%. But this person would get 100% harvest compared wow. to the other people. Praise it was God. in the same location. It's the same, uh, you know, the uh, climate and everything was same. But this man of God was speaking over his crops every day. He would command them, in the name of Jesus, I bless you. In the name of Jesus, I command you to grow. I, in the name of Jesus, I, I speak life over you. And as he was speaking over his crops, he would have such a great harvest that all the neighboring people who were farmers in that area they would be surprised to see his results. And if they ask him, what is your secret? He says, I speak to my plants. I speak to my crops. I speak, speak to my things. And that's what we need to do. We need to speak, speak. the word of God. Yeah. We'll read in Isaiah chapter 5, 0. Verse 4 to 5. It says, the Lord God hath given me the tongue of a learned, that I should know how to speak 
a word in due season in season to him that is weary the lord has given me not the tongue of a teacher it's not the tongue of a teacher because teacher hmm. is always teaching but never learning so he says god has given me the person who learns and not only learns but he goes and speaks or deliver or expresses what he learned okay hmm. so god has given me the tongue of a learned and what i do is i go and i speak word in due season to him who is weary he wakened me morning by morning every day you know he wakened me and he wakened my ear to hear as a learner so that i learn and i speak i learn and i teach i go i learn and i can encourage i can uplift i can build i can uh, you know uplift the people by the word that i hear and then verse 5 it says the lord god had opened my yeah. ear and i was not rebellious yeah. whatever he was teaching me you know it may be very small you might be knowing this you might be knowing the power of tongue or speaking the word of god you might be knowing that but you keep your ears open you know and then you are not rebellious and what happens and i did not turn my back or i did not turn away my back Praise the Lord. Praise God. So this is what God wants us to do, and even more powerful uh, scripture is in Ephesians chapter. Is it in Ephesians chapter four, verse twenty-nine? Let no corrupt communication proceed out, out of your mouth. mouth. Yes. That it may edify the hearer. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Ephesians chapter four. Let no corrupt communication proceed yes. out of your mouth. but that which it may which is good to the yes. use of edify yes. that it may minister grace unto the hearer so the previous scripture we saw through our tongue through our words we can um, speak words in due season and we can encourage we can uh, uplift the weary those who are you know discouraged and here we can edify people we can build people and also through your words you are going to speak grace it's not only for you so you have to speak word to yourself you have to speak word to your health to your body you have to speak word to your family you have to speak words of god or word or declaration into your situation into your circumstances and also to the people who would hear you you know why because verse 30 says if you don't do this then you are grieving the holy yeah. spirit verse 30 you know if you see the anointing of the holy spirit the anointing of the holy spirit whenever the holy spirit would come on people in the old testament or in the new testament okay it would always manifested in one thing when people would get anointed okay it was manifested in their speaking when mm -hmm. the you know at the time of pentecost when the holy spirit came upon people what did they do did they start dancing did they start uh, uh, slaying in the spirit i'm not saying this is right or wrong what i'm saying is one who is filled with the holy spirit will always speak speak the word of god speak the will of god speak the the purpose of god speak what is there in the mind of god into the situation whenever the anointing of the holy spirit if you see the spirit of the lord is upon me for my god himself has anointed mm -hmm. to do what to do what to, to preach gospel to, to the good poor. news to the poor to let uh, go who are oppressed to release you know Uh, it's okay i mean we'll go one by one i mean you will have to rush through one scripture to another so what it says is the spirit of the lord is upon me for my god himself has anointed me to what do what you can see here preach the gospel to preach to the, the gospel to the poor how do we preach not through mind right it's through speaking yes. he has sent me to heal the broken hearted 
to preach the deliverance to captive and recovery of sight to the blind mm-hmm. and to set liberty them that are bruised so the people who are uh, in bondages i can set them free the people who are broken hearted i can set them free people who are blind spiritually and for the things of god i can release them i can preach deliverance to all the people who are captive i can speak the gospel of the goodness of god i can speak about the goodness of god i can speak about the will of god the purpose of god what is in the mind of god through my words through my confession through my declaration through my speaking in faith releasing in faith in the name of jesus you know what i've learned also while praying you know we say in the name of jesus i speak healing over your life yes you are just praying it but you also need to release through faith the word should be released through faith and when you say that in the name of jesus i release healing the moment you are speaking i release healing you should believe that right now at this moment the power of god is just touch that person so mm-hmm. believing in heart and speaking with your mouth and this is what you need to do while i was praying i think i had shared my testimony in one of the healing session that i would pray over people and they would not get healed i had prayed uh, one or twice or once or twice or thrice and eight people would not get healed till i learned that when i speak i have to speak releasing the faith into that person not just say not just pray but to pray in faith or pray of prayer of faith or saying the words filled with faith the moment i release my faith through my word so just don't learn in today's topic that you have to speak by speaking nothing will happen you need mm. to believe in your heart and then through that faith or through that belief you need to speak into your situation mm. you know all the scriptures you see when the holy spirit came upon saul the first king of israel he started prophesying when the uh, joel 310 which says in the last days i will anoint people and they will see dreams and they will but you know what he says they will prophesy i think it's in uh i think 22 it is oh joel chapter 3 in the last days joel 322 is it so. no i'll give you the scripture 228 sorry i said 3 no problem brother and it shall come to pass afterwards that i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and how would you know that the spirit was poured out in their uh, life your sons and your daughters will prophesy will preach will declare will confess will declare the will of god prophecy meaning confessing declaring by faith the will of god the mind of god the the plan of god praise the lord praise god what praise god declare in faith in the name of jesus like um a family you know we pray for a family um you know my son uh like he is now 9 years old but uh he would always eat his food on time he would sleep on time in the night he would not get up um you know the whole day you know he would uh, did not eat anything or he did not picked up anything and put in his mouth or he was not cranky eating and he was very 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 healthy boy very healthy boy never even once or twice uh, not even once i think he gave us any trouble you know why because my wife did not raise him by any other method but just by speaking the word of god over him praise god just by speaking the word of god over him. so he was fed uh, the milk and he was fed the food but more than the milk and the food he was fed the word of god he praise was god. fed the word of god and he was sustained he was his behavior his uh, like and dislike and how he was behaving or what he was doing was completely based on the confession of the word of god that was done over his life Amen. so he was even now he is very healthy boy he is you know blessed he is anointed he is uh, you know uh, has the wisdom of god 
the only reason is by speaking the word of god over his life even now his wife, uh, my wife you know lay hands on him and every night she prays for him and says the same as 10 to 11 years over his life the same scriptures on his life and that scripture is making him the kind of a person that he is that confession of faith is making him the person that he is today and that's what we need to do take the word and speak into your situation mm-hmm. praise the lord praise let's god. look at one uh, uh, i you know i was a little surprised to see this we'll go to 1 king chapter 70 1 king chapter 70 was one One King seventeen one is it? Sorry. Yes. Sorry, one Kings. One King, yeah. And it is talking about Elijah, Elijah, the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead. Said unto Ahab, As the Lord of God, as the Lord God of Israel liveth. before whom i stand there shall not be dew nor rain these years according to my word i mean i was so what he said he went in front of the king he could have killed him but he knew that it was god who appointed him and he went in faith and going in front of the king he declares that there'll be no rain there'll be no dew till i say and for three and a half years there was no rain but the interpretation of this scripture in new testament in uh, in james chapter 5 it's little different and i was shocked to hear that here he's saying as per my word there'll be no rain or the first brother rain. yeah james chapter 5 it'll be i think in 17 or 18 praise god thank you Seventeen. Elijah was a man subject to like passion as we are, and he prayed earnestly. But isn't it uh, strange? There he says, "There'll be no rain mm. until I say." So he's saying, "As per my word, my declaration, there'll be no rain till I say. There'll be no dew. There'll be no rain." and here it seeing he prayed earnestly that it may not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of 3 years and 6 months but here it says he prayed earnestly so whenever i thought of uh, praying earnestly i thought you know sincerely or crying bitterly or you know uh, really really praying earnestly before god but if you see what he did exactly he just declare the word he says as per my words definitely it was god's will god's word came to him and therefore he declared he did not declare out of his own wish or will but it was god's word that came to him and he says as per my word there will be no rain there will be no dew till i say and here the bible says that he is praying earnestly you know what is the meaning the meaning is every time you are declaring the word of god the will of god the word of god in the eyes of god you are praying earnestly amen you are praying earnestly and what is your prayer the will of god your prayer is like the herald's prayer you are declaring what is written you are declaring and by your declaration it is becoming established it's becoming uh, effective it's becoming established by you taking what is written putting in your mouth and speaking over your situation speaking over your health speaking over your finances speaking over people who are going uh, you know getting lost or uh people who are uh, away from god or who are not believing god over your family over your friends over your situation to your company to your finances every area of your life you are praying earnestly when you are declaring the word of god like an herald it's called the herald's prayer it's 
you know, some of the few preacher, they name the teaching as herald's prayer. And herald's prayer is basically declaring what was established, what was uh, uh, there is a bill that gets passed in, in the assembly in India. And then there are people who execute that, especially mm. the officers or the policemen. They execute what was the bill that was passed in the assembly. So we are the executor of the will of God. We are the executor of the word of God. Along with the help of the Holy Spirit, we declare with boldness. We declare with faith. We declare in confidence the word of God over every area of our life. Every area of our life. Your people, you know, um, the people around you speak healing. You speak uh, the word of God. You speak over that situation. You speak the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise, and that's praise the Lord. We, you know, uh, we know so many things. Like um, there are times when I love when we go deeper in the word and you know, we really dig, uh, uh, you know, the, the word of God, the treasures of the word of God. But when it comes to our day-to-day -day life, we also need to make changes in our day-to-day -day life. A very simple thing. You might be cooking your food. You might be traveling or riding your, uh, you know, driving your car, riding your bike. You might be just uh, sitting and doing nothing and just, you know, thinking about something. But when you take the word of God, start speaking over your situation. Start using your tongue. You know, remember this thing that uh, uh, as I was thinking about my problem, I saw an iceberg. It's like my life is heading towards that danger. Like I was in a ship and that is heading towards the iceberg. And when I saw myself and I saw that, Lord, for sure my life is going to hit on that iceberg. What do I do? I said, I mean, I know that I am in real, real danger now and my life is going to hit on that iceberg like that sheep is heading towards an iceberg. But you know, the Lord spoke to me. He said, you have the word. You have the tongue. Use your tongue and start using the tongue. And as you start using the tongue, your sheep is going to take towards, you're going to take a turn. And the moment you keep on using it, keep on using it, you will see your life will start changing. I was definitely going towards destruction. I was addicted to tobacco. I was addicted to alcohol. I was addicted to so many things in life. But the moment the word of God came in my life, I was completely cleansed. I was delivered. My life took a left or a U-turn, you know, from that situation. I was heading towards an iceberg and I was going to hit, get hit and I was going to be destroyed completely. But by speaking the word, by declaring the word of God, my life started to move. And I was saved by that hit. I was saved by that uh, danger that I could see. How? When I start speaking the word of God in that Praise situation. God. Praise God, Praise brother. God. Praise the Lord. Praise and this is what I want to, you know, I'll, I'll take a couple of scriptures and I think uh, we'll close. I won't take much time. No problem, brother. Um, can we go to uh, Mark chapter 11? Sure, brother. 19 onwards. When, when evening was come. Yeah. Was 20. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree that was dried up from its root. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou hast cursed is withered away. Now Jesus is giving them a secret. And he says, if you want to see the result, if you want to see these results in your life, start doing how I did. Or start operating how I operated. And what was the, the secret here? He was teaching them the most, most important secret. And the secret was to speak to the situation. situation. Amen. 22, it says, Jesus answering said unto them, have faith, faith in God. So one of the uh, Hebrew languages says, have faith like God. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have faith like God. And then what do we do? 
for verily i say unto you whoever that whoever shall say to this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he hath said shall come to, come to pass he shall ha- have whatever he says so mm-hmm. if you see here uh, whoever shall say uh saith say if you see how many times that word is there jesus said unto them and jesus was still telling them that like me what you have to do is you have to speak the word you have to speak to your situation everything you know my wife uh, cooks food and it is so amazing so amazing i mean it's like even you don't eat, even get in a restaurant i'm not exaggerating praise I'm god telling you the fact praise the lord but praise you know god. how it is coming so nice because that ingredient we always use and that is speaking in faith over that situation or for our cooking and that's how when we believe we see the result there in in that uh, cooking that we do praise the lord praise the lord brother praise the lord so uh and therefore say unto you so but what whatever you believe uh, but shall believe that those things which he shall which he said shall come to pass he shall have whatever he says so you will see that the horse okay the circumstances or your life will be turned by one bit that god has given in your hand and that bit is your words mm-hmm. the circumstances will not have power over you but through your words you can manage you can control the circumstances of your life when you establish uh, the word of god by speaking the word of god and one last scriptures i want to uh, share is matthew chapter 12 verse 36 or a couple of other scriptures also we'll see yeah matthew chapter 12 verse 36 but i say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment you know god is uh, not going to ask you an account of the sin that you committed uh, but primarily here yeah, the scripture says every word that you have spoken you know god has given us tongue to glorify the main purpose uh, you know you have a scientific name of things you know we can call cat and there is a scientific name of a cat uh, we call dog and there is a scientific name of a dog and it's something which i don't know similarly there is a spiritual name of the organ called tongue and the spiritual name is glory so every word that is spoken idle or an idle word that you are speaking with your glory you will give an account in the day of judgment so please use the word of god to not to describe your situation but to change your situation keep speaking keep speaking the word of god keep speaking into your situation keep speaking to your children keep speaking to your finances and you will see that ship that was heading towards an iceberg will start slowly and gradually change as you keep on speaking as you keep you know it's like watering the seed the watering. word of god is the seed of the word is seed and your speaking is like watering to the seed okay and as you keep on speaking keep on speaking you are like sprinkling the water over that seed and as you are speaking you are sprinkling the water and it's sprouting it's growing it's growing and slowly and gradually it's becoming a tree and once it it becomes a tree then it will start producing the fruit for the harvest in your life mm-hmm. and that's what we need to do praise the lord praise god praise the lord Psalm, brother from 34 was 11 to 14 uh, just two more scriptures just and no one problem, more brother, no problem
children. Come, you children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. He says, uh, here is an offering, uh, here is an offer. Um, you know, we say that there is an offer, uh, like um, you can buy one and you can get free. Uh, there is a discount of 50%, 60%. So here, the Holy Spirit is giving us an offer. And the offer is that he, I will teach you what is the fear of God. Mm-hmm. And then what he says, what man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may say good? Verse 12, verse 13, can we go? Yes, Brother Sari. Yeah. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking guile. Okay? So the anointing will show in your speaking, in your prophesying, in your uh, confessing, in your tongue mainly. Okay? Similarly, the fear of God will also see through your tongue. The anointing, when the Holy Spirit's anointing comes on you, the manifestation of the anointing is you will burst out in praising God, you will burst out in praying in tongues, you will burst out in, you know, you will preach the word, there will be power in your word. So the first manifestation of the anointing or the presence of the Holy Spirit is through your tongue. Similarly, the fear of God, the honor of God will show through your words. Through your words. And that's why that's why we need to learn to use the word to change our a situation rather than describe a situation. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. And Praise then Hebrews Lord. chapter 1 verse 3. Now he is talking about Jesus who being the brightness of his glory and express image of his person. What it says, upholding all things by the word of his power. You know, there's such a huge, huge ocean is, is upholded or it is managed or it is holded by the word of God. You know, everything that you see alive is sustaining. It's upholded by the word of his power. Everything. So the entire world system, the entire universe, everything that God has created, he runs it by only one thing. And the name of that is the word of God. He sustains it. He maintains it. He repairs it. He creates it. He destroys it. He will rebuild it. He will again create it. He will sustain it. He will maintain it. He will repair it. Everything by the word of God. Amen. Now, in the image of God, how do you think our life should sustain? How do you think our life should go? How do you think our life, uh, you know, should be, uh, what should be a life based upon? It has to be the word of God, spoken through your mouth. Yes. In faith, declaring the word of God. So I know it is like a very, very, uh, you know, uh, what to say, very easy and common topic, but I feel that we all of us need it to go through it again. Yes. Okay. And every area of your life, you can speak the word of God. Amen. For every area of your life, you can speak the word. Praise God. God. This is exactly what we need, brother. Um, It's so practical and we all need practical. And as he said, we could be saying our scriptures in the morning. You can say a folder or a Rolodex of scriptures in the morning and at night. But if we're not speaking the word of God, into our situations, uh, then we're absolutely at nothing. Uh, and we know that the, speaking the word of God is the quickest way to bring disorder to order in our lives. As you said, you see the iceberg in front of you. And the only way that we can veer off path is by just keep speaking the word of God to that situation, to that iceberg ahead of you. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Praise Thank you, God. Jesus. Praise God. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely teaching today by Brother Thomas. It's a reminder. We know it. Amen. Yes. Absolutely. Um, This was a really very strong reminder for all of us. Because very often we lose track of it and we are caught by our daily life. And uh, instead of speaking the word, we let ourselves 
carry on with the other uh, spirit speaking to us. Yeah. Absolutely, Sister Internet. Yes. Um, we let the situation... Be... Me. I'm speaking for me here. <laughs> <laughs> no, God. I think we all of us are the same. I mean, we like like brother said, it's a good reminder for all of us. Yes, I mean, each of us have. I want to do something, but then we say, "Ah, oh, no, we can't do this, or this is that, and this is that." But then you know, like he said, just start with in the name of Jesus, I will do this, and it will happen. Or in the name of no. Jesus, I am doing it. I am doing it. Sorry, yes, in it's the name present of Jesus. tense. Sorry, yeah, in the name of Jesus, yeah. I am. Yes, praise we Jesus. We get sidetracked very quickly. Get very quickly yeah it's learning to be more sensitive to the word of god that's coming out of our mouths than 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 becoming sensitive to the situation and it happens to every one of us and every day it's a constant constant challenge yes. to become more sensitive to the words coming out of our mouths uh speaking the word of god as opposed to becoming sensitive to the situation around us or to the circumstances, to the physical symptoms in your body when they become so much more than the word that you know when you have it, as in you say the scriptures that you're meditating on regularly, but it's just to keep, to keep, keep hammering that situation with the word of God. But very often we are so focused on the situation and we are carrying on into it and uh, we lost track and uh, we lost the word. Instead of confessing the word, we are confessing the situation. Yes. True. Praise yeah, God. Right. It says in Colossians chapter 4, 6, no? let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt. Amen. Amen, Amen sister. Yeah, it's very important. See, I... I have experienced what Brother Thomas spoke about today. It was so ironic. I just said it before the session could start. And then the same thing that Brother is speaking. And I speak it every day. Even when I'm doing my cooking, I, I confess scriptures over my cooking. Any, any given task, I, I always speak scriptures over it. That's why I say that the scripture of wisdom and truth in the beginning of the day. So all through the day, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of truth abides in me. So I'm able to carry out any given task during the day or any challenge that I face. Amen. So that's why I never ever face a difficulty of fear, anxiety, frustration, anxiety, aggression, resilience. Never. Never. Amen. Yes, God. Amen. And I always yes, guard my true. mouth. Of a learning, yes, sometimes it, um, you know, out of habit, we say something, mm. but always, you know, going back to the scripture being you, because now we are into the word, we are learning the word and always, you know, keeping a guard of our tongue by Proverbs 18, 21, and also Colossians 4, 6, let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with uh, salt so that what you ought to speak and what you speak, you answer everyone that way. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise but God. what was also a timely reminder was, uh, and you might remind me of the scripture, was um, that we won't have to account, especially during Lent, that we won't have to account for our sins, but we will have to account for every idle word. Like how, what a grave reminder. Yes. I think it was Proverbs. Yes. And let me see if I can go back to it. I have to say, um, yes, I was convicted when I saw this because so, so often we think that we're so busy confessing our sins and repenting for our sins, but it's our, our if we can just bridle our tongues. Yeah. Our KMO, keep mouth shut until further <laughs> instruction. <laughs> yeah. You know, so many occasions the Holy Spirit has just shut me up sometimes. Is it Proverbs it's, 16, 7? Proverbs 16, 7, I think, was the, where the, uh, oh, the when, your ways, is, when your ways please the yeah, Lord. You make it in the enemies to be at peace with them. Yeah, that's it. No, it was. Which one is it, sister? What does it say? This, the scripture um, around, if, basically, Matthew we won't have to 12, account. 36. Matthew 12, 36. That's it. Yes. 
I'm at it well, but I say unto you that every idle word that a man shall speak. Yes, praise God. Yes. Yes. A timely, timely reminder. On the day of judgment. Sister Angelic, this is Trevor. I'm glad you brought up this scripture that you speak about uh, before you cook. I actually texted Brother Thomas to ask him what is the scripture that you use before you cook? Because since most of us are women here, I'd love my food to taste like a restaurant. So. <laughs> Lorid, I just make three sign of cross. This is what I've learned from my mother. I've learned from my mother. I make three sign of the crosses, and I, I, I just say, Lord, you have given me the wisdom to cook this um, dish or, or, or curry or whatever you're cooking, chicken or whatever meat or whatever you're preparing, rice or chick, uh, whatever you're preparing for your family. Lord, you have blessed me with this wisdom. And as I'm adding the ingredients to this, uh, to this um, whatever I'm cooking, I know you have blessed me with the wisdom to add the correct ingredients so that it comes out tasty and perfect. Amen. Especially, especially when I have guests at home, I said, Lord, you are over this, uh, you are, your wisdom is guiding me and whatever essence I'm putting, I'm putting a lot of love into the cooking, but whatever other essence and ingredients that I'm putting into the cooking is all wisdom from you, Lord. And, and you know, God. and many, many, many occasions when I have guests, they always outnumbered to more than 50 or, or, or 70 guests at home. So when I'm doing the cooking, they always come back and ask me what the recipe was. Uh, and, and spice. Had faith. <laughs> yeah. Praise God. So, so that's, yeah, I always say, Lord, it's your wisdom that's guiding me through the day. It's your wisdom. I'm putting the love in the cooking, but the essence and the ingredients that I use comes from you. And I always like I know. know Sister, one more sister. thing is uh, that I say, one more thing that I say is Mother Mary, you know, Mother Mary used to do cooking in, in the, in, in for uh, her family. And I said, Mother, I always say Mother, uh, Mother dear, I don't say Mother Mary, I say Mother dear. I said, you cooked for your family and I'm sure you're blessing me with that wisdom to make this dish, um, uh, you know, a tasty and uh, edible and uh, fruitful and nourishing for everybody who eat it. I always say that. Yeah, Praise God. God. Oh. Praise yes, God. I was just going to say that God has shared that scripture that he has blessed the work of our hands. So yeah, it could be even when we cook. Thank you, brother. Yeah, and thank you, sister. And you, as well. you shall eat and be satisfied. satisfied and God yeah. will bless the work of your hands. Amen. Thank you. Brother. Does anybody have any questions for Brother yes, Thomas? It was a real good teaching, Brother. Amazing very teaching, Brother. Very, very well, down to earth day to day teaching of our day to day life, especially for the women that, you know, who. who carry out these um, uh, little jobs that they do every uh, day. Sister, can... Life. Sister? Yes, in a... Yes. Can I stop live or uh, it's okay, sister? Praise God, you can stop the live. What, sister? It's stop, true. can stop. Oh. The ending prayer. Who's doing, Who's the, doing closing the closing prayer? prayer? Okay, okay. Sister, I'll be doing the ending prayer, closing prayer. Okay, start then. Uh, I had a question for brother. Okay. Brother, Psalm 8 verse 5 says, uh, you have made him inferior only to yourself. You crowned him with glory and honor. So here is mm. the crowning referring to the head or to the tongue. When you can believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. That's giving glory to God. That's when you wear the crown of glory. Praise the Lord. What is the scripture? You said 108, right? 
No, no. Psalm no, eight. Psalm five. eight, verse five. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm um, 8 verse 5, you said, right? Yes. Um, 8 verse 5, yeah. Sorry, I was looking at some other. It's on the screen, brother. Sorry? It's on the screen. It's on the screen. Mm -hmm. I was trying to read what was there. Uh, basically, the context is about a man. And the word angel here, if you see, uh, was five. I'll just share my screen quickly. Yeah, sure, brother. It probably doesn't allow. You can supersede by... It should let you uh, unshare my... I can stop my sharing and... No, but uh, the sharing does not allow the... Okay, okay, oh, sorry, you, you're co-host, so it should allow you. Yep. Should allow you up there. Praise God. See, I'm reading that from Psalms 8 verse 5. Okay? Yes, and yes. verse 4 talks about man. Who is man that thou art mindful of him? The son of man that thou visited him. Okay? And then here it says, For thou hast made him little lower than the angel. So the English translation here is angels. Okay, but the mm -hmm. Hebrew, if you see H430, mm -hmm. the Hebrew word, and the Hebrew word here is Elohim. Elohim, no, no, Elohim so, means angels, brother. No, God, no, God, God. Oh, okay. So it could mean angel, but it could also mean that you have made him lower than um, God or God, God, small letter G, God. God. Yes. So, not sure there could be two interpretation of it. Who is he talking about, or you know, yeah. uh, because it says that are not the spirits uh, ministering angel or ministering hmm. spirit to all of yeah. us? God yeah. has sent angel. Yes, God has sent angel as a ministering spirit to us. So, if we are lower than angel, then how would they serve us? Hmm. Yeah, so God but, has made us lower than the. Uh, Elohim here, if you see the word. Uh, brother, the context was glory uh, you referred to as tongue. Mm -hmm. So here the glory, crowned with glory, it uh, refers to the head, no, brother? Not always uh, it's interpreted like that. So uh -huh. when the Bible says strength, okay, see here, uh -huh. verse 2, this is the best example. It says, out of the mouths of babes and suckling, thou hast ordained hmm. strength. Okay? Now, whenever Bible says strength, it does not always mean uh, praise. But if you see Matthew 21, 16, Jesus is explaining, yeah, you have never, uh, out of the mouths of babes and suckling, you have perfected praise. Praise. So, it hmm. was to say strength, and Jesus is interpreting strength as praise. Mm. Praise, God. So, praise God. Praise God. Yeah, that's so there is strength power is equal in to praise. praise. Yeah. Strength is equal to praise. Praise is equal to strength. Praise the Lord. So every time Bible says strength, it does not always mean praise. But mm -hmm. strength could also mean praise. So when I say glory, it does not mean every time it is glory meaning uh, tongue. tongue. Yeah. But uh, it says, no, I will praise you with my glory. Mm -hmm. Or in some places I can show you that. It says, awake my, my glory. The scripture mm -hmm. says, awake my glory. See, awake up my glory. Awake. Okay. 57. Mm -hmm. Awake up my glory. So my glory is my tongue. When the word is glory then it means the glory, actual glory. And this context you can read, it says, I will praise thee. So the context is about praising God. And therefore, the meaning of this glory is tongue. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Thank you so much. Really can I say my closing prayer now? Yes, please. Yeah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord, for this divine appointment, for this divine teaching, for refreshing us with the power of tongue. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord, for taking complete control of our tongues and giving us the wisdom to use our tongue to worship, to praise, and to give grace to the hearers. And we also ask for pardon and mercy, Lord, for the times we have not used our tongues in a way that is pleasing to you. We ask for pardon and mercy, Lord, for the times we have confessed the situation and not lived by faith. Thank you, Abba Father, for filling us with your faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the finished work on the cross. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord, for taking complete control of our tongue and teaching us to pray when we don't know how to pray. All glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, brother.